The Northern Gateway City at Badgeries Creek is currently the site of one of the biggest dirt-moving missions in the history of the world, where builders are shifting 27 million cubic meters of earth. This massive $15 billion project is being built on land that was once so bumpy and hilly that the gap between the highest peak and the lowest valley was 39 meters, which is the same as a 12-story apartment building. To make the land flat enough for a city, engineers must move 1 million cubic meters of soil every single month using a fleet of over 300 giant machines. But as these towers of dirt rise, can engineers actually build a city that survives the extreme heat of Western Sydney while sitting right under the path of giant screaming jet engines? The story of this massive city did not start with machines, but with decades of talking and planning. For over 50 years, the leaders of Sydney argued about where to build a second airport, and it was only in 2014 that the government finally pointed to the quiet farms of Badgeries Creek and said this was the spot. Before the machines arrived in September 2018, this land was just 344 hectares of rural space filled with small hills and quiet creeks. The goal was to turn this area into the Northern Gateway, a high-tech link that would connect the new Western Sydney International Airport to the older cities of Penrith and Liverpool. It was designed to be the third city of Sydney, a place where people could find high-skilled jobs in science, medicine, and making advanced parts for airplanes without having to drive for hours to the harbour. As the first roads were drawn on the map, the project grew from a simple airport idea into a full-scale mini-city that will eventually hold 38,000 jobs and thousands of new homes. But how do you take a piece of land that is as bumpy as a roller coaster and turn it into a perfectly flat base for giant warehouses and train tracks? The answer starts with a type of engineering called bulk earthworks, which is basically the world's largest gardening project. Because the site was so hilly with a 39 meter height difference, the engineers used a cut and fill method. This means they used giant machines called scrapers to shave the tops off the hills and dump the dirt into the valleys. To keep things simple, a scraper works like a giant cheese slicer that drives over the dirt, peels off a layer and carries it in a big bowl to where it needs to go. The builders assembled 78 of these scrapers, which is the biggest group of these machines ever used on one project in Australia. By moving the dirt this way, they didn't have to bring in thousands of extra trucks from outside, which saved the local roads from being crushed by heavy traffic. Once the dirt was dumped into the valleys, it had to be squashed down until it was as hard as a floor. They used heavy rollers and graders to pack it down in layers, making sure it was strong enough to hold up a giant airplane or a massive office tower. They even brought in nearly a million tons of sandstone, a very hard rock, to sit under the runways and roads like a solid foundation. While the surface was being flattened, a different team of engineers was preparing to go deep underground to build the city's secret weapon for travel. That secret weapon is the Sydney Metro, Western Sydney Airport Line, and it was built by four giant mechanical worms called Tunnel Boring Machines, or TBM. These machines are each 150 metres long, which is longer than two Airbus A380 planes put together. Each TBM weighs 1,300 tonnes, which is about the same as three huge Boeing 747 jets. The machines were given names like Catherine, Eileen, Peggy and Marlene, and they worked 24 hours a day to chew through nearly 10 kilometres of solid rock. As the front of the TBM spins and grinds the rock, it also builds the tunnel walls behind it. A robotic arm inside the machine picks up heavy pieces of concrete called segments and fits them together to make a perfect ring. Each segment weighs four tons, about as much as two large cars, and it takes six of them to make one full ring of the tunnel. The TBMs installed nearly 70,000 of these segments to make the tunnels waterproof and strong. At the same time, engineers used a new invention called a lining erector machine to line the smaller tunnels even faster, finishing a whole ring every hour. But while these tunnels connect the city to the rest of Sydney, what happens once the passengers come back up to the surface into the city itself? Once people step out of the metro stations, they will find themselves in a smart city that is built to think and react. 
the Northern Gateway is being filled with 5G technology that can send data at speeds of 10 gigabits per second, which is about 10 times faster than normal home internet. This speed is important because the city will have thousands of sensors on streetlights, also called smart poles, that monitor everything from traffic to air quality. These sensors can even tell the city lights to dim when no one is around, or tell a park sprinklers to turn on only if the ground is too dry. Engineers are even using artificial intelligence, or AI, to help take care of the city's hidden pipes. They put cameras on robots to look through the water pipes, and the AI was able to find nearly 2,000 more cracks and leaks than humans could, and it did it much faster. This technology ensures the city runs smoothly, but there is still the massive problem of the sun. Western Sydney can get so hot that it becomes dangerous, and all that concrete usually makes it worse by trapping heat like a giant oven. To fight this, the Northern Gateway is using integrated water cycle management. Instead of letting rainwater wash away, the city catches it in special wetlands and ponds to keep the area cool. They are also planting 45 hectares of parks, which is twice the size of the famous Barangaroo area, to provide shade and use the sweat of trees to lower the temperature. But can a building itself be smart enough to help save the planet? The first building finished in the city centre, called the First Building, proves that it is possible. It was built using a kit of parts, which means the whole building was made in a factory and then bolted together like a giant set of building blocks. This makes it very easy to take the building apart and move it or change its shape as the city grows. Instead of using lots of concrete and steel, which are bad for the environment, the builders used a massive timber frame made from local wood. It even has a green roof covered with 14,000 native plants that helps cool the building by up to 20 degrees. While the city centre is for people to work and learn, the northern part of the city is for giant robots and packages. Engineers have designed high bay warehouses that are 52.5 metres tall, which is as tall as a 17-storey building. These aren't just for storage, they are built for advanced robotic systems that can move goods around 24 hours a day to be shipped across the world. But with all these giant buildings and the constant noise of the airport, what are the real-world costs for the people who live nearby? Even with $15 billion being spent, there are big challenges and criticisms facing the Northern Gateway. One major problem is the noise. Because the airport never sleeps and has no curfew, planes will be flying over homes all night long. Local councils are upset because the government's plan to help soundproof houses doesn't cover everyone, leaving some families to deal with the noise of jets as loud as a coffee grinder right above their roofs. There is also a weird engineering problem called the wildlife paradox. The city wants to plant thousands of trees and build ponds to stay cool, but these things attract birds and birds are very dangerous for airplanes. Engineers have to find a way to keep the city green without creating a bird strike risk for the pilots. The project is moving fast though, with the first buildings and the airport set to open in 2026. This city is a massive bet on the future of Sydney, turning a quiet rural space into a high-tech powerhouse. What do you think is the coolest part of this $15 billion city? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see more of the world's most incredible mega builds, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the Ultimate Mega Builds channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. See you in the next one.